the uh, work session of March 24, 2015 to order. Uh, tonight, is there a need? Uh, well, we got new business first, right? Correct. Okay. The first item tonight is to talk about the permanent appropriations. Um, I was not able to attend the fact meeting. Uh, Mr. Birkenhauer uh, handled that matter uh, with the fact um, last week or two weeks ago. I was out ill. Um, I am recommending a slight change to the appropriations as a, that happened after the fact presentation. I want to go through those details, many of which was a result of the leadership retreat we had last week, talking about some of the long-term plans and some shift in, in a few things. So I'd like to, um, first of all, I'd like to point out that the, uh, um, the FAC approved permanent appropriations in the amount of 28 million 011 314. Um, and if you remember back in December when we did the temporary appropriations, the FAC actually approved 28.9 million. And then we tweaked the budget prior to adopting as a board and actually dropped the temporaries down to 27.7. Um, my recommendation tonight is going to be to recommend permanent appropriations in the amount of $28,425,346. Uh, some of those changes that uh, has happened since the FAC meeting, in the general fund in particular, um, we started looking at the cost of doing our nuisance abatements uh, with our uh, either seasonal workers or by contracting it out, and we found that it would be less expensive to assign seasonal workers to that supervised by Roger Krebs and to actually contract with an agency to do that. And uh, and we're actually going to charge those against the general fund because that's where the revenue comes in uh, through the assessment process. So that increased the budget about $5,600. Um, we're asking for an increase of $35,000 to be transferred to the zoning department uh, so that we can do a comp plan update. Uh, when we had our, our leadership retreat, it was pointed out that the last comp plan was updated 10 years ago and we've just gone through the strategic planning update with our public safety department and feel that we need to make sure that our comp plan is up to date and that our land use plan and our comp plan are integrated um, we ran into some challenges with the Kroger development as far as maybe some conflict or potential conflict and uh, while we were able to get through that we believe it's time to upgrade the comp plan um, to today's standards and then there were some uh, boiler upgrades, uh, our boiler system in the basement. You approved that already, but that got left out of the uh, original temporary appropriations. Um, in the road and bridge fund, um, we've had some personnel changes when Director Malloy uh, first went into the public services area. We moved his, some of his salaries and fringes as a result of the reorganization, um, moving some of the administrative assistance. Um, Shannon Baker is now being all charged to road and bridge, and I moved... Um, Roger Krebs from the um, Parks Department into the Road and Bridge Fund. So we just had some reallocations from some of our different funds regarding salary and fringe benefits. The Police Department, we're asking for an additional position for code enforcement. Um, we are about 230 inspections behind. As you know, when the JEDZ failed, we eliminated the part-time position within the Zoning Department because that was being uh, funded out of general fund. Um, since that time, we've talked about a standard operating procedure and feel that to enforce the new resolutions we have with regards to nuisance abatements and property maintenance issues, that it would be much better handled out by a police department officer. Um, we have not, we had not planned on staffing that position um, out of our previous transition plan other than the br brief time we had uh, Officer Frandoni. We believe that the number of nuisance complaints and property maintenance complaints are such that if we don't have a dedicated officer focused on it, we're going to continue to see those complaints increase. So we would like to add a position of code enforcement and pay for that out of the police budget. Can I stop you there? Yes, you may. So the thing that troubles me about that is that we made certain um, statements going up to the JED-Z vote that you know, if it failed, certain things were going to happen. How do I rationalize this increase now is simply taking the easy way out and not holding the people accountable for their decision. We made a decision. I respect the people's vote. I do. I, I, I truly respect it. But it voted. they voted no. And so why don't we have to live with the result of that vote now? Yeah, uh, and you make a good point. I think that by shifting the dollars to the police department, we are reassigning the cost to a different funding source. 
um, where before it was being funded out of the general fund, which we've cut back as a result of the JED. Um, from, a, from a vision and a mission perspective, we believe that if we just dismiss the property maintenance and don't address them, there's no way we can achieve our vision of being a best-in-class community, recognizing that our community did not support funding for the JED-Z. But they, they, we, we told them what the result was going to be. Yes, I, re I respect that. Well, now we're saying, here's a good out-of-jail-free card. What I'm, what I'm saying is that right now we have the ability within our, our police department to fund the position, and rather than not address property maintenance and nuisance complaints, I think it better serves the community to use a different source of funding for that position. Okay. Well, I, I agree to disagree, but um, I also say it's not a big enough issue to make me vote against the overall appropriation, but I'm <coughs> expressing my pleasure with that. Go, Go ahead, Dan. To that. Um, I mean, life's about accountability. Absolutely. It's almost like this federal I, government. Our debt's 18 trillion and counting, but we keep on sending those checks and keep on borrowing money keep from it China. On. God dog, we're going to get it one of these days. The one piece that that is prevalent for us when we sit around and talk about it, and because it is the that is the part of the public safety budget, is the reality that it goes along with that broken windows theory. That that philosophy that if if there's a representation within the community that there's no accountability for the way that you take care of your property or you take care of your residents. That if we just build up that understanding well, of that course there's, I agree with you. I know you do. That's funding. that's the other that's the other side of that argument that says. You make about but when it comes to public safety and the realization is we're how what we're trying to accomplish within a total township is our our argument to Jim was we don't want to let that go because there's so much fallout when respect to that. Is it a crime? Is it additional crime? Is it the 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 representation of our community? The thing that we've worked about. With perception, does that affect economic development? Does that affect property values? We feel like our responsibility to Ken was to come to Jim and say, we need to do this because of this and, and try to gain support. So I totally understand where you're coming from, but that's the angle we we're working from, is we want to we want to be proactive, we want to attack it. And I appreciate you uh, doing that. The uh, the next two fund or the, the police fund also we're asking for, um, as you recall, we are piloting this uh, this uh, tactical medic position, which is a partnership between our police department and our fire department, and we would like to share the expense of a vehicle to be equipped with the public safety logo and the equipment necessary to pull off the tactical medic um, equipment supplies necessary to partner that police and fire department. So that would be a, a fifteen thousand dollar appropriation to the fire and a fifteen dollar or fifteen thousand dollar appropriation to the police department. Um, I spoke earlier about the comp plan. As you know, since the general fund funds the zoning department, the $35,000 increase in the appropriation to transfer the money, now we're, now we're, we're actually appropriating the expense of that out of the zoning department. The uh, uh, motor vehicle license fund, there's increase in benefits from moving uh, Roger Krebs from the parks department. Once again, removing or reducing the amount of expense coming from the general fund due to the loss of the local government fund and the estate tax moving that into the public uh, public services funds and reducing the reliance on the general fund the EMS um, the EMS squad remount uh, two additional capital items there um, an eighty thousand dollar squad remount and a seventy thousand dollars for EMS tablets we have had in our budget for some time an $80,000 allocation to remount our squads, and we have one particular squad that needs to be taken out of service due to age and condition, which is going to require us to at some point double up and do two remounts so we can get that one out of service. Well, last year we moved up a remount to 20, 2015 or 2014 and took it out of this year's budget. What we're asking, instead of doubling up in 2016, <coughs> if we do another one this year, then we can just do one this year, one next year throughout the time period. We can get that old squad out of service. Right. We believe that 2018 will be a, a zero. 2018 or 2019 will end up with zero, so there will be no remounts. The idea is there's this old one that's just hanging up here is costing us a lot in maintenance and things of that nature. If we can move that up and we help our game along, now that we've added a, a, another squad into service at the Thompson Road, which is providing a lot of service uh, throughout the township, this will eliminate some of that maintenance cost associated and we can, we'll get the zero year. Someone, Mike's told me there's a zero year in 18 or 19 if we can move this up. So it just helps us get to that and helps us get that piece of equipment on the road that, that's they can go into the rotation and be actually worked. And then the EMS tablets, that's just technology upgrades for, technology, the, for, the, yes. for the squads. 
And then uh, the Parks and Services, that was moving Roger Krebs money out of there. Um, seasonal to replace long-term illness. As you know, we have an employee that's off on long-term illness and we're adding a person in there to fill his position while he's out. And the YMCA contract, I don't remember whether that was a part of the original appropriations to the FAC, but that's a contract we entered into. So I would like to recommend uh, the permanent appropriations in the amount of $28,425,346 as presented. Do the changes that you've made materially impact your um, projections that the general fund will be structurally aligned at the end of next year? Uh, no, they do not. The, the general fund is actually structurally aligned after this year, with the exception of a couple years we dip a little bit. Um, but with the, uh, um, with the exception of our consolidated road department, uh, which is our, our funds necessary for resurfacing, snow removal, all the other funds are currently aligned through 2022 as far as adequate fund balance. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Mr. Dieters? Aye. Ms. Reinhart? Aye. Mr. Bitter? Aye. The next item I have is a resolution to proceed with a waste disposal joint bid. Um, I'd like to recommend that uh, the board approve this joint request for bids with Springfield and Ross Townships for the collection, transfer, and disposal of solid waste by an independent contractor. I put a tentative timeline in the agenda packet. Um, it may fluctuate a little bit. Um, the goal was for an April 1, 2016 implementation date, but to be able to get all the information out, the bids back in, the public hearing so that the residents can come compare their existing bill to the proposed bill, uh, make a decision sometime late summer, and award the bid so that the contractor has a good six months lead time um, in the event that the incumbent carrier or hauler for the township would not be the successful bidder. We want to make sure that the contractors have time to acquire whatever capital need to serve the communities. So this is a, a all-inclusive bid, meaning that if one particular township of the three would reject it, the bid is dead uh, and would require us to go back to bid independently. But we have met several times and we feel that our interests are as closely aligned as possible. We'll see what happens bid day. But we all anticipate moving forward, assuming that the bids are favorable to our community, uh, we believe that we'll move forward with the process. But each individual entity has the ability to accept or reject bids. Jim, what's a, what's a estimate on the number of, of customers that hauler will get? Fifty thousand? Uh, it's less than fifty. I want to say it's around forty thousand customers. And the contiguous nature of Springfield, Ross, and Colerain just makes the bid package that more attractive. Sure. And we're trying to structure the bid package so that it pretty much mirrors the level of service we're getting now. As you know, if you start doing apples to oranges comparisons, it gets really confusing. So we're trying to do the weekly recycling, although some individuals have the right to opt out of that currently. Um, rather than do bi-weekly recycling, that gets a little confusing. Discounts for a one-container household. So we're trying to make it as apples to apples as possible. And then for those apartment complexes that don't currently offer recycling, our thought process is that we will continue to offer recycling locations throughout the communities somewhere. It may not be here. It may be within our firehouses. We have recycling containers there now. Um, we'll have to decide that when the time comes. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Mr. Dieters? Aye. Ms. Reinhardt? Aye. Mr. Bitter? Aye. And here's the resolution for you. Mr. Royan, I've noticed that the recycling bins out back are full a lot, especially on the weekends. <laughs> yes, we've actually gone to um, twice a week pickup. I believe it's wow. Monday and Thursday. They've had to come and pick up a couple times. Um, we, we really can't explain what's going on. I mean, we've got Wonderful. the same number of bins we've always had. I have talked to Frank Cook and we're doing an evaluation. We have the recycling bins right now at all of our firehouses. If we were to add a recycling, residential recycling option there, we can get credit on a recycling for using those bins. So it may be an option for overflow recycling that if this center's full, they could go to one of our firehouses and use those facilities. That's a great idea. So we're working through that. We would, I just want to make sure it's not going to create any kind of a hardship coming in because they're smaller containers too. Sure, because I know people have pulled into the recycling bins here with a car full of stuff and yes. no place to put it. So. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I'm just glad people are using it. And Mr. Birkenhauer is going to handle the next two items. Thank you. The uh, next item, uh, 
is the uh, lease agreement with Coleraine Athletic Association for the use of the uh, Grossbeck Gross Athletic uh, Baseball Fields. And uh, this is for a one-year period uh, expiring uh, December 31st, uh, 2015. Still moved. Second. Mr. Dieters? Aye. Ms. Reinhardt? Aye. Mr. Bitter? Aye. Frank, we had some residents, that, uh, members of that association expressing concerns. You're comfortable that they're happy and satisfied with this? The uh, the gentleman from the Coleraine Athletic Association and, and the group that attended were in communication with them, and they've actually already uh, said, you know, we're signing this as soon as uh, you sign up. Okay. The uh, next item is approval of hiring of seasonal workers. Uh, these are basically the uh, Coleraine Township Parks uh, seasonal workers that are going to sell passes at the entrance of the parks and those that are going to do the abatement work for uh, grass cutting, uh, the assessment for the nuisances. And uh, the rate would be $11 an hour. The effective uh, date would be immediate. These people aren't identified yet. We're going out to find them oh they're they're, they're listed the, here they're listed in the agenda yeah. in the uh, new business section oh, okay. my apologies they will also be used on an as needed basis uh, we have given the supervision um, of the supervisors a budget and a schedule to stay within throughout the year the other thing we're doing is we're changing our payroll processing and we're going to start tracking our seasonal workers by type of service whether it's abatement work parking permit which parks we want to start to track that so we've got data going forward on how much it's costing us to use seasonal workers in each of the respective areas. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Dieters? Aye. Ms. Reinhardt? Aye. Mr. Bitter? Aye. Thank you. And then the next item I have is a recommendation to go into executive session for the purposes of employment and compensation of public employees and economic development. I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Dieters? Aye. Ms. Reinhardt? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. The executive session will be held in the basement, and there will be no action following the executive session other than adjournment. And for those of you that are going to wait, I do anticipate it will probably be 60 to 90 minutes of executive session.